بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد One of the attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى that is repeatedly mentioned in Quran Al-Kareem is Al-Khabir. Al-Khabir simply refers to the one who has the information about everything. We use the word Khabar, means news, Akhbar, newspapers and news. And this is where this word is driven from indicating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the information about everything. We talked about Al-Alim, the knowledgeable one. And in that we covered most of this topic about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as we can understand, of course. There is much more beyond that and our understanding is only so that we can just try to figure out something regarding the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is little difference between Alim and Khabir. Alim is knowledgeable, which means the one who has all the knowledge is very broad. And Khabir is more specific. Khabir is very specific regarding having information regarding things that we normally call it news. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the khabar, all the information about everything. As in some of the ayahs he says, Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Allah is well aware of everything that you do. Remember the word ma in Arabic language. And this is the beauty of the language. When you look at the beauty of the language, you can understand the beauty of the meanings and the words and the Quran, especially the ayahs of the Quran. The word ma in Arabic language covers everything that is mentioned after it. So whenever you use the word ma, and then there is another word used after that, this word ma covers everything that is attached to that word. So when we say, Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Whatever is in the heaven and the earth belongs to Allah. So the word ma is used, ma fis samawati, which means everything that is in the heaven, no exclusions. Ma fil ard, everything that is on the earth without any exclusions. So this is where the, ma, the word ma means in Arabic language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is well aware of, now let's translate the word ma, every action, everything that you do. So there isn't anything that we do and Allah is not aware of it. As in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَبِيرٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ He is well aware of what's in the heart. Because that's part of our action, we are thinking. So whatever we think, Allah knows about that also. There isn't anything a human being does. Standing from just a thought coming to our mind, to taking any action and saying things, everything that a human being can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have all the information about it. Once a person will realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all of this knowledge about me, and not only about me, about everyone and about anything that exists. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the knowledge. Looking at the khabar, which means all the news of this thing of the past. From the very beginning and before the thing came into existence, Whatever material was used in creating that thing, in fabricating it, in making it, all the information about those ingredients, every detail, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of it. There is nothing, there is nothing that is not written in Allah al-Mahfuz that came into existence. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al-Kareem, ما يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض. There is nothing as small as an atom or مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض. In the heaven and the earth, there is nothing as small as an atom that Allah has no knowledge about. And ولا أصغر من ذلك. There is nothing smaller than than the atom. And as far as we know, this is the first book. That is in existence talks about something smaller than Adam. Wala asgara min dalik. Nothing smaller than Adam and nothing bigger than that. But illa fi kitab mubin. Allah has written that in that open book, which means Allah al Mahfuz. All of these things have been written. Every knowledge, every information. You take a single hair. There is no way for any human being to know. That the hair that is grown on my body, what is the history of this hair? At what time did it start growing? At what time? How much growth took place? What are what are the ingredients? What is it that I ate, and it became part of this hair? Something that we consumed was used in the fabrication and in making of this hair. What was that? At what time did I eat that? What happened to the rest of that food? What other hairs were created through the same food? What happened to the other hairs that were created at the same time? Where did those hair go? As I cut it, where it would go? What will happen to it? And in which forms it will keep on being there and changing forms and shapes till the day of judgment, until I will come back to existence and it will come back on my body. This is khabar, having all the news of it. Allah subhanahu wa taala is al khabir subhanahu wa taala. Once we realize that Allah subhanahu wa taala is such a khabir that nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa taala, then a person will not try to hide himself to do something wrong. In fact, now instead of hiding to do wrong, this person will stop doing wrong. How many times we come to the masjid and we talk, we talk, and we keep on talking deen and this and that, and we know when we are in the darkness of our homes, in in our rooms, and in the privacy over there, what we do at that time? What do we do at work at our workplace? If a person realizes that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Al Khabir, then this person will not be doing wrong when he feels that no one is there to see me, because Al Khabir Subhanahu wa Taala has all of this information. And then someday he is going to present all of these news in front of me, because this is khabar. So all of this akhbar, all of this news that is about me, will be presented there in front of me. And he will remind me. He will tell me, "Look, this is everything that you have done. This is the news of your life. This is what you have done." But regardless of how much we try to hide it from people in this life, that day everything is going to come out because Al Khabir Subhanahu Wa Taala has all the knowledge about it. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is Khabir and such a Khabir that with every technology that we have and every means of Seeking information and gathering information and acquiring information that we have, there is no way that we can even understand Al Khabir until we study this attribute of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Al Khabir and we realize what really knowing the news and knowing the information about something is. Think about the thing that is hidden the most, which means the most secret thing in the world. Something that we cannot see, we may not be able to hear about it. We may not have no knowledge about it. How many things are hidden in the depth of the oceans that human beings still have no knowledge about? How many things are 
covered under the dust, the same dust that we walk on, under the same dust, how many things are covered in there that we have no knowledge about. Al-Khabir subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the knowledge about everything. Really, when a person, if a person would like to understand what is gathering information and what is knowing things, we just need to uh, study the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Khabir so we realize that when we get impressed sometime, oh, some people were able to gather all of this information about this thing. This may be nothing really and it's really nothing when we study the attribute of Al-Khabir, and then we need to understand that what we don't understand about Al-Khabir subhanahu wa ta'ala is of course much more than what we understand. Another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Azim. The Great. And this attribute is also mentioned in many places in Quran Al-Kareem as it is in Surah, in, in Ayat Al-Kursi. وَلَا يَؤُدُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Normally, human beings, we like to put ourselves into that position. And that is, prove our greatness somehow. But this is a position that really does not suit and does not fit a human being. It's a position that only suits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every sometime you find a person in the world who tries to prove his greatness. And he would like people to believe that he is great. And sometimes they even use the word great with them. That he is the great. So people are always trying to prove their greatness. How? by using different things. It is very interesting to study this topic of how human beings are trying to prove their greatness. The time, of course, is not enough to go into all the details and is not even the topic of these sessions. But just to have a little understanding so we realize where we make mistakes especially regarding these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they try to use the position that they have. They try to use their position to prove their greatness. And to such an extent, they succeed in convincing people that they are great. Why? Because he has this position. Doesn't that simply mean that this person is not great at all. And this is why when he's trying to prove his greatness, he's trying to attach something else to himself. And that is that position. And then we see that as soon as the person loses the position, all of that greatness is gone. So a human being has that understanding in the back of our mind we know that I am nothing. So let me attach something from outside to myself. Have some decoration on top of my body. That will show people that I'm something. People are so much used to having makeups these days that even men are trying to using using different type of creams to look better. It's gone now from that side from the, having only women using those makeups. Now even a man is trying to use apply different type of lotions and things and colors and whatsoever and earrings just to try to show that okay I look a little better than what I am so it's now we see much more than what it was any time in the past that we are always trying to <coughs> attach something to our souls so sometimes people are trying to attach their positions as soon as the position is gone this person lost his position and he lost his greatness because he was trying to prove his great by having that position. And how many times we have seen in the history that a person who was considered to be so great, so powerful, just in no time or night, the position was taken away, 
he is placed in the prison now. Now he will be staying there for the rest of his life waiting for his death. Ask this person about his greatness now. Go and talk to this person. Ask him if he would love to come out and just be in his house now. He is allowed, just to be allowed to come and be in his, with his family with, under a condition that he will be under house arrest. They will not allow him to leave his home. He will be happy to come back and be in that position. But no, he cannot even have that anymore. He has to remain behind the bars for the rest of his life. What happened to that greatness? We see people who are so considered to be so great, their own children, they come and they take their position, the position of their fathers, and all the greatness of the father is gone. How many times in the history, children have killed their own fathers to get that position? What type of greatness this is when a person can come and just pull it away from you? Your own children can take it away from you. Is this is a greatness? Some people try to prove their greatness through their wealth. Because I have this. I own this much. So this is why I'm great. And to a certain extent they succeed in impressing people by their wealth and people instead looking at them as great people because he has these things. Now you can see the attachment. So now, there is attachment there. And that is, you see a lot of dollars in front of this person. You see a big factory there. You see a big business over there. You see a huge castle over there. You see a beautiful car over there. This is all, all of these things are used to prove that this person is great. A time comes when this person loses all of these things. What happens now? What happened to that greatness? And we have seen it in the history. And we don't have to go too far. After some of these were recent, uh, recent earthquake. Those people who would never sleep in someone else's house. Not to talk about sleeping in the masjid. People who would not sleep in even other people's homes. No, I'm going to go and get a hotel for myself. I, I, I can't stay with anyone. Either on my own bed or I will go and take a room for myself. Rent a room. He won't stay at his own parents' home, his own brother's home, sister's home, friend's home. No, no. I can't share anything. I need my own privacy. We see people of those times. They are in camps and they are sleeping on the floor with everyone else a full room that is full of people and they get only a space of two feet by six feet, this is all what they have to manage their life with. This is where he's, he has to stay now. No more complaints. Everything is gone. All of that greatness is gone. When we try to prove azama, greatness to our souls, we always are trying to attach other things to our souls. Sometimes, we try to prove our greatness through our knowledge. What happens when a person will lose this knowledge? When the knowledge is taken away? The sign of the knowledge is a big certificate that I have in my office. That's my degree. Everyone should look at it. Look which university I got this from. Look who signed this degree. And then around that we will put a lot of pictures. That look, I had a picture with this person and picture with that person. And I, had, I was honored by this and they honored me by giving me this. Those people are gone. The position he had through these degrees is gone. That knowledge is not of any use to this person anymore. All of that greatness is gone. It was only on pieces of paper. It's gone back. Now the paper may be great, but him, this person doesn't feel it anymore. So we always try to attach things to our souls. And here we see our position also. 
we are in the same situation. We are always trying to attach something to our souls. And by that sometime, someone is saying something. You get up and you shout. You have a louder voice. So okay, I'm greater because I was able to shout louder than you did. Some people are trying to prove their greatness by their strength. And you know that when we see a person that is a wrestler, a boxer, in one of these fields, and you really look at the person, look, this, is, this person is very strong. But don't we see on the other hand, the very same person, that when we see him, we are so impressed, we are looking up to this person, and he loses that wrestling. He was defeated. What happens? People laugh at him. He doesn't even know how to fight. This is what happens with the worldly attachments that we get with our souls to prove our greatness. That when a person loses that, then people start laughing at the person. So the position that really suits a human being is... The position of humbleness. That we humble our souls. We realize our position and we realize greatness belongs to Allah and Allah alone. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in every salah that we perform in every day in our life. Subhan Rabbi al Azim. Subhan Rabbi al Azim. Look at the word Azim now here. Subhana Rabbi al Azim, glory to my Lord who is the greatest. The greatness belongs to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And now, look at this beautiful hadith. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A person who humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah will always exalt his status. And a person who would try to prove himself to be great, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always put him down and humiliate him. Why? Let's understand now. Why? Because all the other attachments that we have, they are very temporary. And after some time they are gone. And even people know that they will be gone sometime. People who see this person in that power, having that strength, they know, the ones who don't like him, they know a day is going to come when he's going to lose this. Regardless of his strength, he's going to get weak someday. Then we will see what he does after that. So all of these worldly attachments, they leave us and they get weak. The only thing that doesn't leave us, our attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the greatest. So when we attach ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get the greatest. We ourselves have nothing. But our attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the person great. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam humbled himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the greatness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. And that was because his attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you attach yourself to the greatest one, to Al-Azim subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we get the azama. also, we get the greatness. It's not because we have it, it's because we are attached to Al-Azim subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we get, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such azim, He's so great subhanallah, that you think about it, you get lost just thinking about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He created certain things in this world. And He put some greatness in those things. So when we acquire a little bit of these things, we feel that we became great. A person who acquires some wealth, he feels that he became very great. A person who acquires some position, or say he became a ruler, of certain land, he feels that he became great. Imagine, Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the owner of everything. How great he is. If a person who borrows something from him for some days, and it's nothing, is not even considered a penny comparing to all the other wealth that is there, regardless of how much we have, 
And just by acquiring these little things, we feel I'm something. And these things are just created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And someday all of these things will be gone. So imagine the azamah and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how great He is that He creates something that He has no value for. He has no value for it whatsoever. And we acquire that and we feel that I became great just because of this. It's just like when children collect some stones and they like to play with these stones. And they may have got these stones from the backyard. When we see the stones in the, in the room, we may even start shouting at them, What are you doing? What's all of this mess from? Throw all of this in the garbage. No. He doesn't want to throw it. He loves these stones. He loves to play with them. He feels great that he has these colorful stones. So he feels great. Now if other children are around him, he will take all of them to that place. Look, I have these stones here. Last time we went to a seashore and oh, I picked all of these from there. And a person feels great because he has some of these things. To other people it's garbage, has no value. But he feels it's great just because he has these things. Same thing when we look at our positions, regardless of what we acquire in this life. It's nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ما. If the value of this dunya was even as much as the wing of a mosquito to Allah subhanahu wa taala, He would not give a kafir even a sip of water. But has no value, not even as much as the wing of a mosquito to us. What's the value of a wing of a mosquito to us? The whole dunya doesn't worth even this much to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And we acquire a little bit of this, we get, we divide the wing of this mosquito into thousand pieces. And then we get one piece, and I start showing everyone, look, I have one piece from the wing of a mosquito, how lucky I am. This is our position. And by seeing this, really we can see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the azamah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created all of these things. And who is the owner of all of these things? And to whom these things have no value? Which means his greatness is such that these things are nothing there. Compared, just like for some of us, a dollar may not mean anything. If a child will take it and he tears it off, he tears the dollar off, okay, that's fine, you know. Throw it in the garbage, don't worry about it. For some people, the value of $50 bill may be the same as a dollar bill to us. For some people, the value of hundred dollars bill will be the same as a dollar bill to us. But is there anyone in this world who can see that now I have so much that everyone stop, stop working. Everyone stop preparing food and meal for yourself. You will get food from me. I will provide food for all the people in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, day and night, feeding all of His creatures. Day and night is feeding them. At no time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, the risk is finished. That's it. There is no more risk for you people. All the animals ate up everything. This shows the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has no limits to it. And really we cannot even get to understanding of the alama and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to realize that we are nothing and subhana rabbi al-azim. Glory to Allah who is the greatest. Glory to my Lord who is the greatest. As it makes us understand that we are nothing and Allah is the greatest, at the same time it makes us feel great. Remember this, it makes us feel great that my Rabb, look at the word Rabbi, when you write the word Rabbi, Subhana Rabbi, it has the word Ya. Ra, Ba, the letter Ya. Ra, Ba, and Ya. At the beginning of Surah Al Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi, Rabbil Alameen doesn't have a Ya at the end. Ra and Ba only. 
But Subhan Rabbi Al Azim has a ya, Rabba and ya. What does this ya mean? Mine. Qalamun, pen. Qalami, I add a ya to the end of it. It means my pen. I'm proud of it. This is my pen. Subhan Rabbi Al Azim, glory to my Lord who is the greatest. So I feel great that my Rabb is the greatest. So, by knowing this, we will have a closer attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. And then I have attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the greatest. So, I have no worries whatsoever. I don't have to worry about any other person claiming to be great and is trying to put me down. Just because he has some position, because subhana rabbi al-azim, my rabb is the greatest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right understanding of His attributes and connection with Himself through His attributes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect all of us to Himself, to His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to His deen, and to His book. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين